could the city of Jackson, Mississippi, finally be getting ready to shutter the 100-plus-year-old Jackson Zoo and close it down for good? A new report from WLBT suggests that very well could be in the cards as we approach a new budget season for the city of Jackson, and they got to figure out how to put a Band-Aid over a bullet wound for a piece of property or business or whatever you want to call the city, parks, that is absorbing over a million dollars a year in losses. Let's take a look. But first, hey, I'm going to keep this short and sweet. You like my shirt? It's our F around and find out, our classic F around and find out logo. We've sold a running ton of these shirts, tank tops, caps, flags, and more. I'm running a huge sale right now just for you guys to the end of the month. If you'll use the promo code FAFO20, one word, no gaps, no spaces, FAFO20 on my website, you're going to get your pick of anything on the site for only 20 bucks. Normally $29.95, $20 plus shipping out the door. You'll be good to go. The website is buyfafo.com. Buyfafo.com. I thought I had it right here. I was going to pull it up on the screen for you guys, but uh, apparently I suck at that. Uh, here we go. Here we go. Down there on the bottom. Uh, we also have our vote felon shirts available too for only 20 bucks. Just use the promo code FAFO20 at buyfafo.com. All right, man, let's jump into it. I'm going to be the sponsor of this video with that. Hope you guys will support this channel and support what I do and let people know if they F around, they will in fact find out. People ask me all the time, well, Clay, what about the, the, the first word, the F, man? Uh, you know, that's a four-letter word. That's a cuss word. No, 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 no. You got to use your imagination. When you're around kids, grandparents, and, uh, and your preacher, it's fool around and find out. Boom, shakalaka. Shirt's now PG-13, friendly for everybody. All right, let's jump into it. The Jackson Zoo. Do you know it's been in Jackson since 1916 when the city of Jackson bought 79 acres of land from Samuel Livingston for $36,000? In 1919, the Jackson Fire Department starts the zoo with their pets, as well as squirrels, deer, raccoons, alligators, rabbits, and more housed at the Central Fire Station downtown. In 1921, the zoo moves over to Livingston Park land and becomes known as Livingston Park Zoo with the addition of exotics like zebras. I'm not going to run through the whole history, but you know what? Actually, we will. There's only two more things to mention here on the, uh, the AI-generated Wikipedia page or Google uh, page. In 1921, I'm sorry, in 1930, work, the Work Progress Administration helps build the new buildings during the Great Depression. In 1985, the zoo expands into more of Livingston Park to develop the African Rainforest Exhibit, one of my favorites. And in 2004, the Friends of the Zoo install an endangered species carousel. Uh, the zoo is home to over 120 species and around 250 animals, including endangered species and animals. In survival programs. Some say the zoo is a good place for a family outing Why? with uh, with exhibits that are well-kept, enrichment activities for the animals. The zoo also offers a learning experience, a splash pad, and age discounts. Now, this is all if you just Google history, uh, Jackson Miss Zoo history. You know and I know none of that's currently true. So let's take a dive into this WLBT article here. This is going to be a little lengthy video because uh, I got a bunch of pictures that I borrowed from Corinthian Sanders' Facebook page that I'm going to show you guys, where he went out there a couple weeks ago, took some photos. And just, I want to make sure I give Corinthian uh, props there. He is running for mayor of Jackson, so I encourage you to go to Facebook and look up Corinthian Sanders and see, hey, is he your guy that could get your vote? Or even if you don't live in Jackson, is he a guy you could donate some money to to help win? He's a good guy. I'm not officially supporting him yet anyway. I've got another friend that's running too. I'm going to see what he's going to do, Mr. Kim Wade. But neither here nor there. Let's look at this article here. There's a lot of details here that we got to uncover. As you see the headline, Jackson Zoo sees continued decline a year after some city officials said it should be defunded. I agree. Defund it. Close it. Move it. I don't really care what you do with it. It's an eyesore. It's a drain on the city budget that could be going to fix in red lights, potholes, cutting the grass at cemeteries, and much, much more. And also the animals need to be in much safer facilities than the ones they're currently in. All right, here we go. This is by Anthony Warren, great reporter over there at WLBC. I like Anthony. He says, uh, a year after a Jackson City Councilman, Aaron Banks, by the way, 
proposed defunding the zoo to help cover other city expenses. The West Jackson Park continues to see dwindling attendance, stagnant revenues, and more dead animals. Records obtained by WLBT show that between January 1st and mid-July, Jackson Zoological Park reported that 8,354 visitors and around $40,000 in revenue. So through the first seven, six and a half months of the year, only 8,354 people have been to the zoo. That sounds like a lot if you're talking about a one night at the Brandon Amphitheater for a concert, but you're talking about a staple of tourism, what should be a staple of the city's tourism, the zoo, only having 8,000 people come through the gates. They used to do that much on a weekend back in my day. Anyway, these figures represent a 1,400-person drop-off in attendance when compared to the same time frame the year before, while revenues were about $1,600 more than the amount reported. Not really sure what they mean by that, but anyway, 2021, the attendance was 22,103 for the year with revenue of just under $100,000. In 2022, attendance was 18,387 with revenue right at $75,000. In 2023, it dropped again by about 300 people to just over 18,000 in attendance with a little bit sharper revenue drop down to right at $70,000 and 69,846. And then of course this year, as we just mentioned, 2024 through mid-July, only 8,354 people have been through the gates, excuse me, and only $40,000 made. But that is actually an increase in money. So if you if you sit here and say we this is halfway through the year, they should finish. Well, you're going to be going into the winter months, so it's probably going to be less. But let's just say six months plus six months, you're going to come in just under about 16,600 visitors if they're able to double through the end of the year what they've had. And I don't foresee them doubling that through the winter months, but again, neither here nor there. That's going to put them at almost 2,000 people less than the previous year. But if they match their uh, revenue, they would have made a little close to $80,000, which would be 10,000 more than the previous year, but just pennies in the bucket. Meanwhile, animals at the Century Old facility continue to die off since WLBT's March 23 investigation into the zoo, an additional 13 animals have passed away, including an 11-year-old beaver, a 16-year-old fishing cat, and a 12-year-old cougar. I don't personally know how long animals like that are supposed to live, but if you look at that in dog years, that might not be that bad. We'll just say that. I'm trying to be positive. Y'all know I'm very rarely positive when it has anything to do with Jackson because of the complete and utter corruption and mismanagement of the city. It's hard to think positive about them or give them the benefit of the doubt. But I'm trying, trying to be unbiased. Continuing, the lack of animals was not lost on Zachariah Curtis, a Harvard University law student who was visiting the park for the first time. Now, as we go on here, you're going to realize that Zachariah is a libtard. That's right. I said it, a libtard. And uh, the fact that he went to Harvard University Law School should tell you all you need to know. Anyway, oh, she, he, Zachariah is a she, not a he. I do apologize for misgendering you there, Zachariah. She had just passed the, uh, let's see, yeah, she had, she had just passed the Asiatic black bear exhibit when WLBT caught up with her. WLBT asked her, are you visiting the zoo? But she, she was at it. She's damn obviously visiting it. Anyway, I digress. She goes, I think so. I haven't seen one animal. Curtis quickly corrected herself, having just glanced in the direction of the African savanna exhibit where she saw an ostrich. They have ostriches out at uh, Cypress Point, formerly McLean's, uh, by the way. She said conditions at the park were likely the result of disinvestment into the capital city, something she, something she has seen elsewhere in the southeast. That right there, that's that liberal word for saying you mean Republicans in the south are not funding black Democrat cities like you're supposed to. You know I got some thoughts on that. I'll give them at the end here. I'm going to promise I'm going to quit interjecting my opinion. She said conditions at the park were likely uh, a result in divestment in the capital city, something she's seen elsewhere in the Southeast. Quote, the people here are wonderful. The culture here is obviously very deep and well-known. You talking about the Democrat death culture? <laughs> yeah, it's well-known, all right. It's uh, going to be the deadliest city in the country three out of the last four years at the current pace. Yeah, the culture is well-established here. <laughs> Anyway, she goes, but I really think I'm seeing what I expected to see, she said. I don't know the funding 
But if this is paid for by tax resources, and we've had some sort of several de- and we've had some we've had sort of several decades of flight from the area, a water crisis, basically urgent needs that are not entertainment or recreation. It's unfortunate. It also could be part of a wake up call to start paying attention and raising the alarm about what's going on in our southern cities. Well, see, my southern city's fine. We ain't robbing, stealing, killing, drug dealing, and treating it like it's a scene out of Grand Theft Auto, the video game over here in Brandon, where I currently reside, or frankly, any other city in the capital area, Sands Canton. Continuing on, the zoo, y'all know where the damn zoo's located on West Capitol Street, has been at the center of debate for years. And in 2018, the society that used to manage the zoo announced that it was studying moving from West Capitol to Northeast Jackson in hopes of boosting attendance and revenues. That's over there in the Lafleur's Bluff area where the Natural Science Museum and Children's Museum is in the Waterworks Curve, just to freshen your memory up there. However, Chakwe and Tarla Moomba, the mayor of Jackson, came out against that idea, saying it was taking another resource from the West Jackson community. This was when I first realized what idiots were running the city of Jackson. I said, did they just claim racism against the own city? Again, the, did the city of Jackson just say the city of Jackson was racist against the city of Jackson? It's all black people. The whole damn thing is ran by blacks. It's for blacks. It's like FUBU, for us, by us. Hey, you can't be racist against one another. It's just it's not how racism works. At least that's how I understood it worked. Anyway, months later, uh, the zoo director resigned after she admitted to using state bond money to prop up the zoo against, uh, amidst Failing finances. At least she tried. Uh, Continuing on, when the zoo, I'm sorry, when the city finally took over, the zoo was supposed to be closed for a matter of months. However, it did not reopen for nearly a year with the city being unable to reopen it until it obtained a temporary exhibitor's permit from the USDA, that's the United States Food and Drug Administration. The park reopened in August of 2020 amid the COVID-19 pandemic. During budget deliberations last summer, the city of Jackson Council made headlines where they discussed closing the zoo to raise money needed to cover rising insurance costs. That just makes sense. That's a big boy decision that sometimes you got to make when you're a politician. And I supported that decision. At the time, the city needed an additional $2 million to cover premiums. Park and Recreation was seeking between $1.6 million and $1.8 million to fund park operations for the 2023-2024 physical year. Eventually, the council backed off the proposal after an outcry from residents who, mind you, don't go to the zoo there in Ward 5. However, members agreed there should, in fact, be a more in-depth discussion about the zoo's future. As you see here, the zoo is in complete disrepair. I, I, I imagine any money that's being spent over there is probably being funneled off somewhere or all the supplies are having to be bought from one of the mayor's minority set-aside contractors, suppliers, something. There's a reason why they refuse to make the big boy decision to close the zoo. And I guarantee you it's because money, this is just my opinion. I can't prove this. Allegedly. Allegedly. You know, I guarantee there's some money being skimmed off the top somehow, some way. I know these people. Free the land. Arrest the mayor. Anyway, that's a portion of the giraffe a uh, shade device appears to be torn off from missing. The giraffe exhibit was empty during WOBT's visit uh, Friday morning. The discussions, uh, anyway, so the discussions came following WOBT investigation to the zoo, uh, which looked at the zoo's 20-year decline. This is talking about them shutting it down. The zoo appeared to still be in a downfall, a downhill traje- trajectory during WOBT's three your side visit Friday morning with multiple empty and overgrown exhibits and dilapidated facilities. Among concerns, a portion of a shading device put in years ago to protect the giraffes had been torn off, while the empty exhibit next to it had several, had had multiple trees growing aside. A sign saying, new resident in in process appeared to have faded, having been in place since at least March of 2023. Additionally, air conditioning in the backyard creatures exhibit was off, and two city employees pointed out that an anaconda, an anaconda housed there had what appeared to be some type of black band wrapped around its body. It was unclear why the band was there, and officials with the administration, the Parks Department, and the zoo, of course, could not be reached for comment. Paint me shot. They're ignoring responsibilities. 
Air conditioning was also not operating in the aquatics building with glass doors on both sides of the facility being propped open. Just past that, multiple cages that at one time housed numerous exotic birds were empty with fencing around at least one of the cages having been completely removed. Ward 6 Councilman Aaron Banks was the one who first suggested closing the zoo, saying the city shouldn't continue to allocate so much revenue to a facility that's generating very little when Jackson has other pressing needs. Quote, we have to make sure that we prioritize our spending and any revenues that we get taking care of basics. You know, the streets, public safety, our right-of-ways, dilapidated housing, overgrown lots, make sure that we can cut graveyards. That's been a big thing around here for y'all that don't know. He said, those things which are essential to making sure we have a good city, I think we should focus on. And as you see here in these photos, it's just, they're empty. There's nothing there. I mean, this is like the History Channel show, uh, like at the end of the world, if all humans just disappeared and Mother Nature takes back over. That's what's going on at the zoo. The humans and the animals have, in fact, disappeared, and Mother Nature is taken back over. You know, I'm a, I, I like what they call abandonment porn. I'm a, I'm a, I, I love watching urban exploration videos. That's how this whole channel started was me doing urban exploration videos of abandoned properties in Jackson, Mississippi, and it's evolved into what it is now. <clears throat> so I find this stuff wildly interesting. I hate to see it, but if it's going to be there, I like to explore it. Continuing on, with budget season approaching, Banks says he's anxious to see what the administration is proposing for the park. He said that there have not been any in-depth conversations about the zoo since then, in part because the transition of leadership in parks and recreation. Shortly before the physical year began, Ison Harris stepped down as the parks director in September of 23. He was temporarily replaced by Steve Hutton, who was actually fired from his previous job for being a pimp. That's a true story. Uh, he served in the role until Dr. Abraham Muhammad. I mean, talk about free the land. Abraham Muhammad was appointed in January. During his, con during his confirmation hearing, Muhammad said the zoo's problems were due to a lack of advertising. Look, I sell advertising. I spent probably a million dollars in advertising over my years in the nightclub business. Advertising ain't the zoo's problem. The zoo is the zoo's problem. The city of Jackson is the zoo's problem. You know, I said this about Jackson State football uh, when Dion left. I said, Jackson State's greatest rivalry is not Alcorn. It's not any of the other schools in the, in the SWAC or in Mississippi or anywhere else. It's the city of Jackson. Uh, there's this nut job idiot that sells shirts around here that says uh, Jackson versus everybody. He doesn't know how right he is. It is Jackson versus everybody. Everybody in Jackson. It's Jackson versus Jackson. When you're in business in Jackson, you're in business against the city of Jackson. Anyway, Muhammad said uh, about the comment about the lack of advertising. If you look at the commercials here in Jackson, you know what's happening in Destin, Florida. You know what's happening in Pensacola, Florida. You know what's going on in Memphis. That's because those places invest in advertising here in Jackson. And it's got a report here on some, some of the animals and this, that, and the other. We're not going to get into all that. Uh, for his part, Banks says he understands why the city wants to keep the zoo but says some tough decisions are going to have to be made. If we're spending $1.6 million and the revenue is less than fifty to $100,000, we got a problem, he said. We have to make some tough decisions because there are other things that need to be prioritized that are not getting done. We reached out, uh, WLBT reached out to Director, to Jackson, Director of Communications, Melissa Faith Payne. But of course, just like everybody else in the city, she didn't return the phone call. Uh, let's take a look. I got some photos here. Again, I got these from Corinthian Sanders on Facebook. He's running for mayor of Jackson. Let me pull them up here. These are from a couple of months ago. Let's see. So you just kind of see here. This is just a little animal cage. It's got, I think that's a bird in there. So you got that going on. That appears to be uh, nothing, or is that a snake? Uh, again, it's just run down, dilapidated hellhole. I think this is where the tigers or the monkeys or the lions or something used to be back in the day. You know what you don't see there? Animals. That's going to be a recurring theme through these 14 or 15 pictures is uh, there's no animals. I think it looks like you got a, a rhino there. I know I just said no animals. Obviously, I know there are some animals there. I mean, just overgrown. Again, they don't even do landscaping. You can see this, uh, this little wood trail here, little bridge, whatever. 
disrepair. I mean, you could at least come through with a blower and a weed eater. They don't. They won't do anything. They can't do nothing right. Again, overgrown. No animals. This is a observation deck for uh, some type of animal cage. There, it's closed off to the public. You can see the the deck there is in disrepair. More empty cages. Another observation deck that's got some caution tape in front of it that's closed off to the public. Uh, I guess they tore something down that was there. Again, recurring theme, no animals. Another, uh, I think this is where monkeys and stuff were. No animals. More cages. No animals. Unless there's something right there that I can't quite tell what it is. In terrible shape, nonetheless. Like, uh, leaves everywhere. I mean, you almost can't see the sidewalk. And last photo here. This is a... Um, I think this is around the entrance of the zoo. Nothing there. No people. Sad situation. Sad situation at the city of Jackson Zoo. What do you guys think they should do? Close it. Move it. Screw it. Leave it open. Let the city of Jackson continue to throw money at a problem that ain't ever going to get fixed right. Let me know in the comments. Be sure to like, share, subscribe. Drop me a comment. It helps us beat the algorithm. We're bringing you real news with real opinions. We don't sugarcoat anything on this channel. Check out my radio show every Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. to 9 a.m., 103.9 FM, WYAB. It's known as the Clay Edwards Show. And don't forget, if you go to my website, use the promo code FAFO, F-A-F-O 20, at buyfafo.com. And everything on the item is marked, everything on the website is marked down to just 20 bucks. That's $10 off normal price at the end of the month. Huh, wrong, uh, wrong, ex wrong exit video there. I was trying to hook you guys up with. Anyway, y'all stay blessed. Stay safe. Peace out.